Welcome to Music Matters Podcast with Daryl Craig Harris, talking about all things music with celebrities, artists, music business insiders, and more. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Music Matters, a podcast series about all things music and all things creative in this case. Um, I have a legendary reporter who works for International News Service, um, Yuri Kajiyama, hopefully I said that correctly. <laughs> and uh, she's an amazing lady. We first met uh, because I was actually playing with her son, Dosaku, who's a very well-known uh, traditional drummer, a drum taiko drummer from Japan. And uh, we talked about coming on the podcast. So how are you doing, Yuri? Oh, fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. So you're in Tokyo, correct? Yes. Um, what's life like in Tokyo these days? Well, actually, um, you know, because of the coronavirus, um, a lot of people are um, wearing masks. But as you know, Japanese people tend to wear masks from before. So right. now there's more people wearing masks, but it's so crowded, I mean, in Tokyo. So, I mean, and so it's just um, very difficult to social distance. Yeah. And it's the end of the year when everybody goes out and tries to party. But I mean, but it would be it would be more if it weren't for the coronavirus. So even with the scaling back, it still feels really crowded and very difficult to social distance. There's never been a lockdown in Japan, but there has been issues of warnings off and on throughout this period when people are asked to close their businesses early or close them entirely, but it's not all voluntary. There's no, nobody's, you know, nobody um, gets um, penalized for doing X or Y or Z and it's just been like voluntary, but you know how um, Japanese people are pretty orderly and they are obedient. So um, I would say overall, it's been pretty pretty good. We do have um, cases growing um, in the more crowded areas, like Tokyo is one of them, and Hokkaido. I don't know what happened to Hokkaido, but that was one case that had a cluster very early on, and so they've been, they've had very difficult times. Uh, difficult time trying to control that. Also, other cities like Osaka or, you know, they have, um, we have more uh, cases there. And then it's growing in Japan and in, especially in Tokyo and the other urban areas. But compared to the other, you know, when you look at the world, mm -hmm. it, it is, um, it, it is, the other, other places have it far worse. Uh, Brazil, the United States also, of course, um, you know, I, and I have family and friends in the United States, and so um, it's very um, stressful and and worrisome. So, so sure. I would say in Japan, we we're doing we're we've been spared. We're, we've been very fortunate. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, in Japan. I actually um, kind of to back up a little bit. I used to live in Tokyo. I lived there for four years with uh, Cirque du Soleil. We had a show at Tokyo Disney, and that's how I met your son, who's an awesome uh, traditional. Uh, drummer and just great uh, musician in general and um it's interesting like the, the japanese they're very uh like you said i guess obedient but they actually they pay attention to the rules unlike a lot of westerners i, I guess i would say and when you have a, 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 a tokyo is so busy you can't avoid using the trains all that kind of stuff so it's it's uh it's great that they've actually managed to keep control of it there because you know it's obviously um, not the best situation and this year's been tough but um Let's talk about your beginnings. You went to school actually in uh, in the states, and I, I guess UC Berkeley was one of your one of your schools that you attended, and then Cornell. Can you tell me a little bit about about that adventure coming over to the states and, and going to school? Well, I, I went to the United States first when I was six oh, because okay. my uh, father also uh, studied in the United States um, himself, and then the um, so when he was with at the University of Maryland, he was he's an engineer. And so that's when I first went to the United States was when I was six with my parents. And then I went back there again for, our, for high school because my father had a, got a, a temporary job, uh, I mean, for, for a few years at NASA for the Apollo program. So then I spent um, some, uh, a couple of years in, in Alabama. Okay. So, and then all this time, well, even when I was living in Tokyo, um, my parents wanted me to uh, be able to speak English, you know, because my father thought 
um, that was his big disadvantage was his language ability, even though sure. he, he, he actually studied English since he was a child too. But um, so he wanted me to be a native speaker. So he put me in international school. So I went to, um, I don't know how familiar you are with international schools in Japan, but I went to ASIJ, American School in Japan. Oh, okay. And I went to um, International School of the Sacred Heart. And then, then uh, for college, um, I went to uh, Bryn Mawr first. Um, okay. Yeah, because my, fa- my, pa- my parents wanted me to get a full scholarship and it was really easier for me to get into an all girls school, having that I was a Sacred Heart girl. So then sure. I got a full scholarship at Bryn Mawr. And then, but then I wanted to go out transfer to Cornell because Bryn Mawr just felt like, you know, just very small. I mean, it's a great school. It's beautiful. Where's that located? But, huh? Where's that located? Near Philadelphia. Oh, okay, great. So then I went to Cornell and um, um, I studied uh, sociology and anthropology. I was very interested in how um, multiple cultures interacted with each other. Um, why was Japan a certain way and believed in certain things? And then it would be totally upside down. You know, if you're in the United States, what's considered good in Japan might be totally bad in America and vice versa. <laughs> yeah, and it, is, why, it is a different world there, isn't it? Yeah. And then so then it kind of made you wonder, you know, what what's making society click and what's setting these values and why why do we got to follow them? You know, if it doesn't make any sense, you know, if you don't want to, um, uh, you know, walk 10 steps behind your husband. I mean, why do you got to do that? And so then I started to think about discrimination, too, because um, there's racism, you know, obviously, um, since I was I was small, but being in Alabama, um, right. you know, race is has always been a very important issue for me um not only as as an asian in 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 a white world or an american world but also because even within races there's the same mechanisms of discrimination that operate that is just like racism so you see that racism is just you know a form of discrimination using race which is a very easily easily identifiable trait but it could be um, gender or it could be um, national origin right. um, or the or within um, like caste societies uh, like India or also uh, Japan has a caste system of sorts. Right. You know, and so then there's going to be discrimination. You know, people are going to find ways to discriminate. And why is that? And why is that perpetuated? Because when you look at the kid, um, when he or she or you know anywhere in between is born, that that person is not you know going to be thinking you know it's not going to be a program to right. discriminate. But something is going on, and I think it's it's an eternal question that that we should face as artists, and right. uh, we we have a great possibility to to you know break break ground or make proposals in that because the mm-hmm. world is connecting. Like you you know you worked with, um, you know, my son, Isaku, and that's how I know you, but that's only coincidental, isn't it? I mean, yeah. um, you, you could connect in all these different, uh, different ways. And I think that's yeah, one of the great things about, yeah, one of the great things about music, actually, that I like, especially when I lived in Tokyo, because I was playing with a number of different groups. Um, and even like we, we did our, our world music uh, orchestra um, thing with Isaku, is that that's sort of the great leveler of the playing field. You, the race drops away and you don't think about those things as much. It's really more about connection and, and, and the art, like you said, being an artist really transcends a lot of that stuff. And I think the culture it, are, as humans, we tend to, you know, that's sort of built into us, the racism thing, it's something that we've always got to fight. And I think you're right. I mean, nobody's born being, being racist or being, having those things, all that stuff sort of taught in our culture, which is, it's sad. It's, and it's actually a universal thing. That we all have, I guess we all have to fight about or fight fight over and and try to get past. Um, tell me about being a poet and what was your your was that something you started when you were very young, or what, how how did you get interested in that? I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I was writing poems as long as I can remember or stories, and um, in fact, like when I was, I, it took me a while to figure out that not everybody was a poet. I just thought <laughs> as a child, everybody did these things. Right, sure. And um, 
I, mean, I always like to read. Um, and uh, going to international school, there's a long commute time. So like I had to, I read a lot on the trains, um, but I, I don't really know. I mean, it's like, why do you breathe? Or why <laughs> do you like um, chocolate, you know, ice cream more than strawberry ice cream? I mean, you don't really know. And I think it's the most natural thing. And I think it, 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 um, it is not some frivolous thing. You know, it is something that, demands a lot out of you to face something that is happening or um, whatever the topic might be and try to really face up to it as yourself, you know, without, am I, you know, um, commercial, um, commercial goals or right. even somebody telling you to do X or Y or Z. It's very pure. I know musicians think, think that, you know, have a lot of uh, great ideas about how great music is like it's it transcends language for example mm -hmm. um and obviously poetry is word bound but you know as the bible says first there was the word i mean the you know you might have different languages but the idea of the word is is powerful like you know if you say love or if you say love in in sign language everybody knows what that means and that's like, you know, to get to that hone down essentials of that condition, whatever it is, um, that's beyond life or death of an individual, something that is there out there, you know, maybe, um, you know, somewhere in the universe, there's other beings, I, I don't know, but it's sure. something like that. I can't yeah. really explain it. And that's what um, I always liked it. And um, obviously, because it's so free of any boundaries, really, um, nobody's really doing it for money, obviously. So, uh, I mean, there are famous poets, I shouldn't be saying that, but most yeah. of us we just do it. And also, it's so instantaneous, like haiku. You know how, um, you know, the story of Basho, the haiku guy, you know, he went through, you know, he, you know, he went through all these travels and, you know. Right. It's like a cleansing process or a journey. Um, all these things, I think, make poetry um, a powerful um, human, human, you know, exercise or something. Yeah, and it's, it's about, I mean, poetry is about sort of about truth, right? Getting to the point of it and, and it's just finding creative ways to express it. And I think um, your poetry, you know, I was going through... Um, some of your creations last night on your website. It's just really, it's powerful. And I think and that's probably also why, you know, just reading a book and doing that kind of thing, it really elicits images in our heads um, beyond just what we our normal lives are. And it takes us to a different place. And I think that's the power of poetry. I know in Japan too, I think the arts are very appreciated, maybe more so in the, in the Western culture. There was a lot of, I know when I experienced, when I lived there, there was a lot of people doing poetry, doing readings, doing that kind of thing in English and in Japanese, which was, which was great. Um, and then you also studied um, filmmaking and how did that, how did you go from poetry to becoming interested in documentary and, and also just filmmaking in general? I always liked uh, movies um, like Kurosawa movies or Ozu movies. <laughs> and I watched them uh, when I was at, when I was actually in the United States more than in Japan, because the appreciation for a Japanese filmmaking um, of, of that caliber is like humongous in, in the United States right. and other Western countries, as you know. And, you know, so I would just go watch, um, you know, um, uh, Hitchcock movies or um, uh, Fellini movies, and then they will see the Kurosawa movies. And then, so I was always intrigued by that. And then, so um, I did work with, um, filmmakers for years, you know, it was almost parallel to the way I was working with musicians with my poetry. Oh, okay. I was also working my stories with film. And um, uh, when I was in California as well. And then um, actually, uh, I went to film school more recently, um, I think in a, a 20 something, 10, 15, 18 or something, just several years ago. Okay. And I went to film school, actually for my journalism. Because yeah. everybody starts saying, uh, you know, we everybody, uh, you know, we're getting short staffed. We have to take photos. We have to do video. You know, everything's right. going on video. So then I went to film school, thinking, well, that I just take, I uh, use my vacation day and just go to New York and 
Airbnb somewhere, or you know, plus <laughs> stay um, when my um, colleagues were on vacation. And I went to New York Film Academy, and they do have wow. like a crash course, and it's 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 great. Like you know, you get to uh, learn acting, directing, um, you know, all that, and you have to make a couple of your film, couple of films, your you know, and. And so, but then I, I, I just realized that video for uh, journalism was totally different from filmmaking. Right. You know, yeah, it's just almost the total opposite, you know. It's still, it's still oh, storytelling, but it's a different, it's just a different gear, right? <laughs> yes. And, 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 you know, if you started doing filmmaking, you, 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 we can't do that with journalism because you can't um, cut, you know, cut, you know, because in, in a way, you know, because cuts, in journalism, I mean, uh, in in filmmaking, in a creative process, you can make anything look like anything, and and that's bad for journalism because you got to <laughs> yeah. show the guy who's looking that we're not tampering with what you're seeing. This is right. this is reality. So, um, but I mean, I still learned the basics, and I I love filmmaking. And so when I did the um, news from Fukushima theater piece. Um, I was always trying to document it, you know, through video. And I did that um, that uh, piece, the theater piece, uh, News from Fukushima in New York first. And then, oh. and, and then I did it in uh, San Francisco more recently. And I tried to document the New York one as well. I have, but I did the camera for that. And then when I did the San Francisco, which was like just uh, maybe four or five years ago, um, I, I did, I was already working with a, a film, another a filmmaker, Yoshiaki Tago. He's a Japanese director, and I was already working on him. He already he already documented some of my readings, so I was already working with him. And then so we we did that. So we made the film um, on, of the San Francisco. Um, Right. So let, let's talk about that. So I actually, I was living in Japan when, and the news from Fukushima is related to the Japan earthquake in 2011. And um, we were actually living there with Cirque du Soleil. And I actually happened to be in Hong Kong when that happened. Um, and we were on vacation in Hong Kong and I turned on the, the uh, CNN in the morning and I saw as a tsunami wave was coming in and I was like, wow, what is going on? Because that, that was our first introduction to the Japan, Japanese earthquake. Um, tell us about how you got interested in that. And I think a lot of Westerners don't realize how many people pa or perished in that earthquake in Japan. Tell us that story and, and how that affected you. Um, so um, the, I, I, I had to deal with that initially as, as a reporter, because it was big news. Um, I was in Tokyo at that time. The building that I was in, like, swayed, like, like, because it's one of those new buildings that's designed to sway to absorb the shock. Yeah, they're on rollers. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this was so big and so long because it was a uh, magnitude, you know, uh, 10 or whatever. It was just, it was yeah. just, usually it's magnitudes are very in the lower, like three or four or five. It feels already pretty big. And this was like really big. And then it, of course, it set off the tsunami. And I had to, we had to have the um, the TV on to show to see what was going on. You know, this was still in the moments. So we're still in Tokyo, right. and then um, we saw the the um, the wave come come in, the water come in, and these little cars that were we were just getting sucked up. I don't have the uh, the number um, of people who died offhand. I think it was, I was upwards of 20,000 people. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. a lot of people. And then, um, um, so then, then like a couple of days later, it was, we saw on live TV news again, that um, the nuclear reactors in Fukushima mm -hmm. uh, exploding and we saw the smoke coming up. Yeah. And then uh, we didn't know what was going on, but uh, then then there was another one. They, they have four reactors there. One didn't have any rods inside, so they it couldn't explode. But they all exploded. All three of them, three yeah. of the four, exploded, um, had meltdowns. But you saw the smoke coming out of the number one and number three, mm -hmm. and um, um, so then of course like that 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 just 
as I mean, I, I'm actually fortunate because I am a reporter, so I, I had to um, cover that. So I was just thinking yeah. about that. And so I wasn't really thinking about. Um, yeah, that's sort of your reporter's yeah. instinct, right? You're, you're yeah. like, if there's something that happens, most people run the other way. With a reporter, you sort of not necessarily want to run to it, but you want to know the story. Yeah, so, and so, so I, I mean, um, so, so that, that, that was it. And so I, I, and then what I learned was that when something like that happens, nobody's going to want to listen to music even that much or um, poetry. I mean, it's, this is, you know, if you're hungry or you're about to die or you're worried about uh, radiation, um, you know, to be an artist is something that we get to do when we are, our bellies are full. Right. We know we're not going to, you know, keel over and die, you know, next second. The world is not going to explode, you know. But, you know, we were in a different situation. And then, but that, you know, in the beginning, like I think most artists in um, Japan, including Isaku's teacher, Taiko teacher, Yoichi Watanabe, he said, this is not the time to be doing music. You know, this yeah. is, you know, there's just so many people suffering and we have to do something else now. Sure. And then there will come a time when people are, you know, kind of settled down and they turn to uh, music again for right. that spiritual um, comfort or uplift, being uplifted. And so, I mean, that's, that's, that's basically, you know, I was just dealing with the, uh, news, um, the, the, the news. Yeah. And, and Fukushima then, is actually not that far from Tokyo. How many, how many miles or kilometers is that? Uh, I, I don't know. I think it's a couple, it's like a couple hundred or maybe 300, but it's yeah, not, 360, it's, you know, something like that. Yeah. yeah and when it, you're dealing with nuclear stuff, that's, I mean, that's yeah. scary. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course, like, um, you know, we have to, we, we went there too, to cover, you know, mm -hmm. so we went to, um, uh, the exclusion zone. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So, um, so then I'm just saying that, you know, that the poetry kind of took the background then, but then, um, some, after I experienced this and then there was another thing, another development within me as a human being to try to write poems or make sense of it, of it as a poet, mm -hmm. you know, different from, um, from just reporting what, what had happened. And then, then, um, I would, I, I, the first uh, poet that, um, the first person to publish me, my poetry, it was uh, Ishmael Reed. He's a UC yeah. Berkeley uh, professor, very respected uh, poet. And, um, and Ishmael Reed said, um, you know, this, this, this is gonna make you a different kind of poet. You know, because right. like I'm, most of my poetry dealt with like being bullied because I was Asian mm -hmm. or love poems, you know, or having, you know, giving birth or right. these are very personal experiences. And I, and I think those are important. Um, they're important. And, and, you know, a lot of poetry is based on those personal feelings. Sure. But when you are a poet and trying to deal with human catastrophe, you know, or you're trying to deal with greed and, you know, other, you know, you know, things that are going on in the world that, you know, that you confront it as a human, as an individual and in and, and this magnum, that, you know, and this is not just, um, uh, you know, opening up the newspaper and seeing um, corruption, you know, or- right. it's, a, it's a different level of- that, Yeah, yeah. I mean, th all these are important, but um, so he, 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 he said that, and I don't know if I um, lived up to all his praise I and mean, he's very supportive of all his students. His, um, his thing is that uh, famous poets and poets who are totally unknown, there's really almost no difference. You know? and then, yeah, it's, it's just for some, for some reason yeah. in the world that something right. discovered yeah. them and they didn't discover yeah. the other person. Yeah, yeah so, so then like his, his partner, Carl LeBlanc, was the person who directed my, my piece. Mm -hmm. And so I had all these poems and then I also had stories and then, so then we juxtapose those. 
So this is not something like I woke up one day and I said, I'm going to write a theater piece called News from Fukushima. No, it was just, just everything came together uh, very um, um, organically, sort of. Yeah, like, like osmosis or something. It just came. Yeah. And the story could have been anything, I think, that the juxtaposed story, um, it could have been, uh, you know, like Shakespeare has, you know, uh, like Hamlet, you know, to be or not to be kind of story or... Romeo and Juliet, boy meets girl kind of story or, yeah. you know, but then, uh, so I chose for this, I chose the um, boy meets girl story, basically. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's um, Which is un a universal theme, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And then, so that's juxtaposed to tell that story about how we as human beings continue to make mistakes, you know, and um, we're trying to become better than our parents, but sometimes we don't succeed. Um, yeah. You know, we, we, we're not perfect, right? So then if you, and if your imperfection uh, ends up in a nuclear meltdown, that's gonna have, um, have some consequences because right. we know that the main reason the meltdowns happen were because they had backup generators in the basement. Right. So when the tsunami came, there was a power failure. And so when you don't have power, the nuclear fuel is not going to get cooled. Right. Because that's the power is needed to keep water going into the system. Yeah, we, we think that, as humans that we're really smart and we know how to design everything and then nature yeah. always has a surprise yeah. for us, right? Yeah, and also like, I mean, why didn't they think of that? Why right. did they have it in the basement? They could have had it a little bit higher then we wouldn't have had any of this. So it's not that, you know, even if you have a technology that you think is foolproof, there's always going to be some idiot or somebody who wants to save on the money or, um, and then they keep saying, uh, well, it couldn't be helped. It couldn't be helped, you know, and then what kind of accountability is that when they say, you know, it couldn't be helped? No, somebody could have helped. Somebody could have thought of this. And then um, we saw that there were lots of studies that were being done that said this area was prone to a huge tsunami. Yeah, but there, I know there's, and there was a lot of political stuff involved with that too, right? Some of the shareholders. I don't want to go too far into that. Yeah, right. But people but can I mean, research they, it. It's not like they didn't know. I mean, right. they they could have known, of course. But there's, but you know, I mean, we we you know, it's we can't be going like this. You you should have known because yeah. we make mistakes too, right? I mean, we have a history of slavery. You know, the we we make a lot of mistakes. Come on. So um, I think um, we, we have to be a little bit more humble and not think that, you know, we're so perfect and we know everything. Right. And, and we certainly do not know anything. And that's what, that's the kind of stuff that poet, poetry can, um, can kind of try to yeah. deal with that, those questions, you know? I think, uh, yeah, and poetry is so powerful because it really elicits strong images. And it's just like you said, the word, it comes down to the spoken word or the written word um, that really obviously has had a huge impact on our on our history as people and, and how it elicits images in our minds. Um, making the transition from the live stage show to doing the film, you said you, you filmed some of that, you just filmed yourself when you were originally in New York. Um, that, that film, the documentary film, A News from Fukushima is actually won several awards around the world. Um, what was that that transition into actually thinking about releasing the film and going down that road? And, and like, what was the impetus for that? Well, because, you know, we did the, um, the New York production first and at La Mama. And, oh, yeah. and uh, we had a great bass player for that, Melvin Gibbs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. So he was our bass player for that. And we've always mm -hmm. been uh, very fortunate in getting because uh, you, know, you always integrate music as a big part of what you do, right? Yeah, and then so, and then, um, then for the, um, then Harry Tubman went on tour, so he couldn't make it for the San Francisco um, production, but uh, we got uh, Stone Takeishi. Okay. Um, he, he, he was the bass player for the San Francisco production, very talented person, and um, he lives in New York, but he's also Japanese, so that made it, uh, you know, he understood all yeah, the, the connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and even though um, I really miss Melvin as well, and he was very instrumental in, in directing the direct, you know, the direction of the music for this um, news from Fukushima. And 
So then, you know, we, we have uh, elements of film already in the production. Uh, we, you know, Tago, Yoshiaki Tago, went to Fukushima and filmed the, uh, the, the destruction of, from the tsunami. Right. He spent time there. Um, and so we had that going. And the uh, um, other thing we had was um, uh, Bon Odori. We had film of Bon Odori. And mm -hmm. for the San Francisco production, uh, Isaku also was one of the musicians. Right. And so um, and we, had, uh, we had Taiko already from the beginning for the New York production. Mm -hmm. So then um, I just wanted to um, just have it on something that could be um, seen later, you know, that right. not just dissipate after the um yeah theater. you want to capture capture the moment in time and yeah. and, and share it because that's the thing like if you can have the most amazing thing but if you don't capture it that's part of my my background with the photography thing I, I would do these gigs and really fun gigs and i'm like nobody's taking photos there's no video there's no record of it and something like so important what is that story it's great that you did that you know yeah thank you the, the actresses were um were weren't weren't um they, they, the, the fact that they were, um, their performance was documented on a film was, um, it was, uh, was new to them uh, in a way because not all their performances are documented, right? Sure. And, and I had um, uh, Shigeko Sarasuga mm -hmm. and um, Takemi Kitamura, they're Japanese um, of origin, Japanese origin, but they're uh, in New York act actors. Mm -hmm. And, um, Monisha Shiva, she's also a New York-based act, actor, and uh, she's of uh, Indian origin. Oh. So we crossed a lot of um, boundaries, and right. I, I think Monisha Shiva, um, who you know, they all, they play all these different characters within the um, play. But I think she was a really great addition to our story hmm. because we're trying to say. Um, uh, you know, not only are we breaking down the boundaries of platforms, like in terms of poetry, music, film. Yeah, bring it, bring it all dance. together. You know, yeah. We have dance, you know, all those things. And we're also uh, having people from different countries and backgrounds, you know, different cultures. Right. Um, uh, we had uh, Kozan Kikuchi, a uh, shakuhachi player. Um, mm. he's, he's based in Japan. And he's also from Fukushima. Oh. And so we incorporated um, his shakuhachi, which is like the Japanese flute. Um, and he added a lot. Um, and we uh, used the music, the traditional music of, of um, that area mostly. But we right. had other, other music too. And that's, but, is, that's uh, is it Fukushima Prefecture, right? Where that, where that is? Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. yeah. Because there's and different, so, basically different, I guess you would, you would equate it to maybe like different states or regions here, I guess is how you would explain right. it. So, so it'd be like, you know, if you had music from Mississippi, right. you know, that, 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 that'd be like what it, what it would be. And yeah. some of those, um, those, uh, the songs that, 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 that originated from those areas were pretty, are pretty, pretty really pl close. Soma is pretty close to that, where the nuclear meltdowns happened. Uh, okay. So we used uh, like Soma, um uh but that's 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 uh an area pretty far from the yeah because um, each in japan i mean way back when and you know i guess i don't say ancient times so way back when japan the, the different prefectures were you know they're isolated they developed their own thing and then it all kind of came together under the emperor right that kind of i, I don't know you obviously i don't know that story as, but, as well as you do but that, that it's really interesting because japan is so interesting for that because you know, Tokyo, the culture in Tokyo is a little bit different than Kyoto, is a little bit different than Nagoya, right? People think it's, we kind of equate it to the United States, but it's really not the same thing. I think. Mm -hmm. So we use mostly the Fukushima based uh, bom, bom music, mm. uh, festival music. And um, we, uh, I, as I was saying, like, like the songs were not all from Fukushima near the right. nuclear reactor. Some of it was a little bit farther, but still, basically the Fukushima sound. Mm -hmm. And we uh, incorporated the, uh, the Bong Festival. Mm -hmm. um, this was Carla Blanc's idea. And um, uh, she, she said uh, she decided to juxtapose the Bong Odori, which is the festival that we have 
for the um, dead, when the dead come back. Oh, That's okay. what bone is. And um, that the, the ancestral ghosts come back. Right. For the, um, you know, and then this is not supposed to be a creepy experience. It's yeah. supposed to be but I mean, that's, it's sort of like they have the day of dead, the dead in Mexico. It's the same Correct. kind of idea where you, where you reconnect with your, your past relatives. Yeah. And, you know. and then, so then they have, they set up a temporary stage mm -hmm. and they have music. And then there's always taiko, uh, taiko drums. So there are, those are big drums. Right. And so um, we, we incorporated that kind of music with, um, you know, other modern music and ohayashi music and um and modern music as well with poetry so um so it all came together and that that's how it, it, it developed and then and then we had the film already from the beginning to show the through film what was happening with, in fukushima mm -hmm. you know uh projected on the stage right so then so then yoshiaki tago was already involved from the beginning and also, even before that, I, I had worked with him. He he documented my um, poetry reading, so I already knew him. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I met him. Oh yeah, he wanted me to. Um, he he at that time he worked for NHK, okay. and so then um, it was just NHK the, is, the, is the national uh, yeah, television yeah. broadcasting. Right, and, and then he said he wanted me to be on NHK on a show, and he was approaching all these different journalists to, to create this like show. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to the show, and um, I, I, I never appeared on his show. And he he also quit NHK, and he started doing other things. So, but that's how we met, and then okay. we started, you know, doing um, film together. Yeah. What was your uh, so? What was the first festival you actually entered? Was it was it that festival, or where, where did you first show the film? Um, oh, oh, we showed our film first. Uh, Oh, Berkeley. Oh, we okay. showed it at Berkeley first. Hmm. The um, um, Berkeley uh, Film Festival, a video and film festival. Okay. We won the Grand Festival Award. Um, wow. We sh we showed it there, but I mean, yeah. it's not. It's it's it's. Um, I mean, Mel Vapor runs the show, and he's like a really sweet guy. But this is for independent artists. Okay, this is not. This is for meaningful people to come together and share their work back. and you know we're yeah. not trying to you know be hollywood or anything i mean yeah and that, so where some of the film festivals around the world that <clears throat> i know you've won a number of awards and it's been in brazil where's some of the other countries where the film has been shown um the brazil was online since ah, covid right everything's moved online okay and um so um gee there uh I don't remember this. I know it's such a long, it's a really long list. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because um, oh, then there's a there's a um, uh, Indian woman um, who who ran the Silent River Film Festival. Okay. But I, but I think she's U.S. based, mm -hmm. and um, gee, I, I I don't I don't know. I mean, it's it's it just goes all over the map, really, yeah. and then also. And we're gonna we're gonna put a list actually on when we do the uh, podcast you can't description. Commit to all of them. There are just so many festivals now. I know. And yeah. um, they're 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 mostly like all online, and right. because they can't have the real festivals, the the real life festivals. Sure. They're really trying to go online, and uh, it, I mean, it, it's just it's just. Um, I mean, you well, have to you have to do with you do your best. Yeah, you know? I mean, I think the great thing about the online thing is actually in a in a funny way. Well, not a funny way, but that's sort of the future is that you actually get a global audience for these for these films that are in these festivals, and a lot of the I mean, these festivals are are you know many of them are world known or are very well known, uh, and they create a really unique collection of work that they can show oh, yeah. these people that can access to, online. To connect with other filmmakers and to see these other films mm -hmm. is is is. I mean, you, you don't have to go online to, to those online festivals to watch your own film because you're already sure. seeing it. Right, and, right. Then, and so you, you like watching these other people. And, mm -hmm. the, and then you see that there's uh, films from like Indonesia or, you know, places that you don't, I don't, I'm not trying to insult Indonesia, but I'm saying right. we don't wake up and think about Indonesia, you know. Or, as a, as a 
film creation market. Yeah, whatever, on Nigeria. Right? I mean, we just don't think yeah. about that that much, period. You right. know, we're just involved in our everyday lives and we just watch, um, you know, Hollywood or Netflix or something, even though even those platforms are starting to diversify. Well, the great um, thing about, yeah, and actually I just, I did a... Um, an interview with a, a actually one of the world's top reality TV directors. And he also works with Disney and Nat Geo. And we were talking about that with Netflix because they just invested like over a billion dollars in new studios and, and new directors. And the good thing about that is it really has democratized the filmmaking process, right? Because that money, I mean, part of the film process is actually having the funds to, to make the film, to release the film. I mean, what's your thought on, on that stuff? Just the process. Perfect. Mm -hmm. What part me? I mean, what's your thoughts on the process of, of actually that whole thing of actually submitting the films and getting them seen, and oh. yeah, that that's must be quite a quite an endeavor. <laughs> I would think. Yeah, right. Um, I don't really understand it yet. Um, I just do the best I can, and because I, I, you know, even with my poems or anything I do, they're like your children. They deserve to, you know, have their day. Right. You know, they. Uh, you know, have their day of expression or in the light, limelight or whatever. So, but everything takes money, you know, and I don't have, I mean, I don't, I'm not rich. So yeah. I'm not poor either, but so you got, it's like, um, I think some people um, go out and buy, a, um, buy something for themselves or they go on nice vacations, but I invest in my art. Yeah. And that's why I, I, um, I would like to keep my um, soul uh, clean of guilt if I can. So, yeah, wouldn't uh, we all? <laughs> yeah, but so then that's why I, I try to earn an honest living mm -hmm. and I do it in a way that I think benefits the world. You know, like, I mean, doctors certainly have that, right? They, they get to wake up and think, I'm gonna do my best to help these people, especially in the pandemic, we saw how much they have sacrificed the, and not just doctors, the nurses, you know, the paramedics, everyone yeah. who, who is involved and also all our essential workers, you know? And I think, I think reporters are also privileged, you know, and then we're held to a higher standard as well because, um, you know, we have to, we have a responsibility to tell the story accurately and fairly and objectively yeah. to the world when, 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 when we're called on that. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I think filmmaking is is um, just like my poetry it will be very, very um, handmade kind of feeling, raw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to be um, anything but who I who I can be. But I, I do have um, another uh, stop motion uh, animation that I worked with oh. called the Very Special Day. And that's a short. And I, I worked with a, a Japanese stop motion artist. Stop motion means you take, um, you know, one right. shot at a time and then it- it, it it's, it, it's a tedious process. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And and um, so he took like maybe two years to 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 finish this short film. Wow. And and um, it's called A Very Special Day. And that that's one, uh, even more rewards than uh, Fukushima. It's done very well. Oh. Uh, and um, that's just um, my reading a story about a little boy growing up in Japan hmm. and um, with music. Yeah. Um, oh, I have a bass player on that as well. Hiroshi Tokieda, uh, uh, very talented. He went to Berkeley. That's how I got to know him. Because yeah, there's so many, you know, uh, people who haven't been to Japan. I mean, there's so many great musicians uh, living in Japan, from Japan. It's. I mean, uh, Isaku is a world class taiko drummer, traditional traditional um, musician. Uh, it's it's just amazing the talent. So 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 then I also had Kozan Kikuchi, hmm. who was uh, uh, who's a, the shakuhachi player who's on who's from Fukushima, and uh, Ryan Carter, uh, an American guitar player. And then so then I read I, I did the 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 poetry. I mean the reading of this short story. This short story about this little boy growing up. And then he, the, the Hayato, the stop motion artist, made it into this short film. And I, I wanted to do the audio again to match the, um, the stop motion because the mm -hmm. audio was not very high quality. It was just 
me reading the story with these musicians. Yeah, but there's a, there's a charm in that. Huh? <laughs> there's a charm to that, just the real rawness. Right. But then, so, so I mean, I don't mean, I mean, their music was high quality, but right. the audio was not high quality. But then the Hayato said every little thing that he had made matched everything. And to do it, you know, he didn't want the audio to be changed. You know, which, right. which you know that when we make film, we make the audio last, right? Right. So yeah. that's what I was thinking. You know, we're going to match up the audio and we don't have to worry so much about the audio at this point. We can sure. go in a studio and make it really clean. Yeah, you're just doing but a rough draft. No, this is stop motion. Everything is matching. And it's, you know, you're going to like, you know, everything is like so, you know, minuscule. Because I forget right. if there's like, like 30 something um, um, images per yeah. second or something. It, it, can take a, it can take an entire day to do one second. Yeah. <laughs> So, so then I said, okay, well, uh, you, you took two or three years to make this, so yeah. let's go with that. And then, uh, so I have that, and it's about, it, it's, it's, um, it's about a little boy growing up in Japan. Um, he's, he, he, the character has a mother. The father is never appears in the story, yeah. and they're Japanese American. Ah, okay. But then he finds out that he's, he's, he's um, discriminated in Japan because he's Japanese American. So it's right. about it's about discrimination, but you know, it's within the race. Yeah. And um I don't think that's a story that's been told. Uh of course the uh, um mm. Koreans in Japan have told that story a lot of times, but the, the discrimination against uh people who look Japanese, you know, uh, you know, right. and, and I had friends that they looked Japanese but they didn't speak the language very well or perfectly and people would yeah, that was a big issue, right? Yeah, so so it's about that and about this. Uh, it's a coming of age uh, story about this mm -hmm. little boy uh, coming to terms with that experience. And so we, I have that. And um, so I'm really proud of my filmmaking. I want to um, do um, uh, more, more, more. I, I, but it's hard because right now with the coronavirus, right, uh, it, it's very difficult. So I'm trying to record. Um, I wrote a song, you know, so now like this is my next step is that now I'm actually writing music. Okay. Uh, why not? You know, why, why can't <laughs> exactly. I call it write music? Why not do that? And then, so then I'm going to try to get somebody to sing that um, and uh, record that and then take, take the, uh, the mu like music video right. of, of that. So that's, that's what I want. And then it just, it does keep you honest. I think trying to be engaged in um, poetry and, you know, doing the music and the film, mm -hmm. Um, some people, like uh, I used to, um, uh, Shuntaro Tanikawa, who's a very famous Japanese poet, Shuntaro Tanikawa, mm -hmm. um, he also uh, translates the, the Snoopy, uh, the Charlie Brown. Oh, interesting. And, um, yeah, he's, he's quite, uh, uh, he's, he's like a legend. And he used to just tell me that most artists are either visually or audio, um, um, you know, inclined. And sure. there, there's very few artists who are both, but mm -hmm. that's, I think that's before like filmmaking, you know, or um, what we know as the visual format that because, you know, for filmmaking, audio is so important, you know, so I think we're reaching this age in which it's all like there, you know, the audio, yeah. the visuals, everything. And um so that that's that I really like that you know I really like that potential for you know to be able to do the music, the 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 poetry, all that right. you can you can imply with the idea, and have the visuals, what I see going on in my head, you know on on, on film you know yeah. I want I, I really want to do that so I want to really really. Um, do a good good music. Uh, What's your thought on? I mean, I, I, it seems like almost all of your uh, projects, as far as bringing them to fruition, is is about collaboration. I mean, obviously the poetry is something very personal, but what's your thoughts on the collaborative process as far as creating projects and that kind of thing? When you work, um, I think, um, or when when you're in society um, in in real life, people try to exploit you mm -hmm. or they try to put you down. Because they think that the, there's it's like a zero sum game, right? And the resources are limited, 
So the more person A takes, the less B is going to get. You know that that's, and then you 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 have a system in which, um, uh, you know, somebody is making all the goods and then you sell them. You know those kind of like um, mechanisms at work. Right. But when you collaborate on an artistic project, of course somebody has to have. Uh, the directors say, you know, you can't just be all doing anything you want. Yeah, it's, it's a benevolent but, dictatorship. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But yeah. if you are, you know, if you, you know, come, come and, you know, to this table um, to create this artistic project together, the, the good bass player is not going to be um, detrimental to the good drummer, you know? I mean, they, sure. they, they can both be good. It's not a zero-sum game. It's it's multiplied, it's 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 eternal and it's it's um, infinite. I think that's what makes um, to be in that space when you collaborate with someone, and uh, when you when you tell the guitar player or the drummer, um, can you do this, and then they do something, and then sometimes it's not what you thought they would do, mm -hmm. but it but it just sounds good. I mean, that, that, that feeling of coming together and then that person understood your story. You know, like if they, they play something and then, and then they, they're thinking, is, is, this, is, this, is this okay? You know, that's usually what they say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're not sure. They're not sure. And, then you, and if you don't like it, you could say, well, can you do the, that a little bit faster there? Or, you know, you mm -hmm. can make adjustments, but it's give and sure. take. And... You, it's not oppressive, you know, because if you start saying, um, you know, like like whipping that 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 bass player, like you're like they used to whip the slaves, right. you know, you're not gonna get uh, very good music. Yeah, you're not gonna uh, get the best one. Yeah, yeah, you're not because you gotta. It's 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 coming from within. You know, it is a spiritual and um, personal um, process. So if you want that that bass player to deliver for you. You got to reach that 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 point with that person, and it's not like that person is your friend even, or that person. You know, you may not meet, see that person for years, but you know, you know, when you see that person again, that person was living life in the same way as you. You know, in, in some ways, you know, and I think this is the connection that we really need in this world. So if everybody became a bass player. <laughs> exactly. See, oh, yeah. I've been trying to say that for years. <laughs> a poet, then yeah. we would not have any of these problems. Right. Because everybody would be connecting where they're best. Not like how am I gonna whip this other guy and make you know make him pick cotton so that I can make a lot of money. You know, this right. is this is like really this is evil, right? When you think about it, I mean you gotta face up to some of this history is is evil. And and of course Japan, I mean, well look what it did to the rest of Asia, you know, and yeah. then they, to their own people, making their children get on a jet, you know, a kamikaze, you know, and then right. at the end when they knew they were losing. Yeah. You know, these, these are important. It's a, it's a tough story, but it has to be told, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, th those, those are the things that, that people are capable of doing, like, you know, sending their own children to death because they didn't want to admit that they were losing. Now we have to really make sure that we don't do this with the pandemic. You know, we must, even though the pandemic is not caused by human beings, or some people say it is, somebody right. made it up in, in uh, wherever, we don't know. But as far as we know, there's not some guy, you know, a Wizard of Oz, like making people sick. Everybody's right. trying to battle that, but we still have to be, you know, be, on, be vigilant about how our leaders, are um, people who have money and power, hmm. you know, maybe making incorrect decisions and right. maybe putting our our lives, you know, our grandma and grandpa, especially for this disease and, and everybody's uh, lives at risk. And we saw that repeatedly with Fukushima, you know, um, how they kept telling us it was safe and you go there and you see it's beeping, you're, you know. Yeah. And they yeah. have an exclusion zone for a reason, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and and um, you know that you know you're not gonna um, you know keel over and die at that moment, but it is it is not. Um, they don't have everything under control. That thing is not going to be decommissioned that easily. 
it will probably take um, decades. Um, maybe it will never um, be really resolved. I mean, look what's right. happening with, um, um, you know, uh, Chernobyl, you know, we, we it's still, mm -hmm. Was, it's still there. Um, yeah, I remember. Not, I mean, I remember seeing the images of of the workers that volunteered, mm -hmm. volunteered to go in, and and I I just oh my heart broke for those guys because I you know I mean they they did something that was necessary but to make that decision and like you said you may not you may not um, be affected immediately but maybe 10, 15 years down the road you don't know right that's part of the story mm -hmm. yeah so that's very powerful. Um, What's what's the future for you? What's what's the next next step for you as far as filmmaking and and that kind of thing? What what do you see coming up for you? Well, like I said, I want to do the music video. I, I wrote my song, right? And I already um, maybe you can help me. I'll send it to you. I already yeah. have have it, and I um, I have this. Um, I already have like a demo uh, music, uh -huh. and I'm I, I'm already in contact with the singer actually. Hmm. who lives in um, Japan oh, and okay. but um, and you no, do a lot of, a lot of these projects you're doing with your son Isaku too is he involved in this in the music video also oh actually Isaku doesn't really like to work with me that much um, <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny>. um, <laughs> he, but you guys you've done a lot of stuff together I'm though. Surprised he did the the news from Fukushima I don't know how I got him to do that um, and he <laughs> brought funny. his friend Joe Small from uh, now he's a, a professor at um, I think Haverford or someplace mm -hmm. um, and usually he doesn't he doesn't like to do it and it's also it, it's kind it's hard I don't want to work with my mother either would you <laughs> <laughs> that's true <yeah. laughs> and also there is that aspect of it <laughs> also my poems deal with things that I think are hard for him to deal with like uh, about uh, race um, because um, he kind of grew up living, dealing with that stuff and oh I mean, yeah and actually he's he learned a lot more about japan through taiko through his teacher you know the amano jaku yoichi watanabe so his his understanding of what what's proper about being japanese and um you know that kind of thing all came from the from his teacher i didn't yeah. i just raised him as a liberal american you know and then that's why he the teacher always tells me isaku told him that there was absolutely no discipline in our house and that Isaki <laughs> could do anything he wanted. And, and my, my way of educating him was to make him feel like he wanted to take the bath or, and he doesn't re remember being scolded at all. Right. That, that's what the teacher told me. I mean, that's kind of exaggerated <laughs> because I did scold him, you know, if, you know, if he didn't, you know, I did scold him. Right. I, I was not violent or anything. But I, it is true that I try to, um, you know, I try to give him a free environment so that he yeah. would, um, and then, then the. Um, but he's, you know, he's a great guy. And I, what I like about him is he's very culturally open. Like when we did the the, um, the orchestra thing that we were doing, we had guys, we had a percussionists from Ghana, we had uh, Japanese and it was, a, and I'm obviously, I'm the, I was the American guy. But I mean, I like that about him that he's very inclusive in what he does. It's very, it's very cool. Yeah, I think he's still he's he's still um, grappling. Like just you are too. Mm -hmm. We all are. You know, I think we try to be inclusive and bridge the uh, the gaps and yeah. try to connect. And at least we are um, suffering or trying to uh, give for something that is going to result in a good artistic result right not in trying to hurt the other person sure I mean if you're trying to make make a theater piece you know I mean you you, you might have um people with um you know un, uncomfortable zones or yeah but that's part of, I mean probably as an artist that you're sometimes yeah, you're you're yeah, that's right, part yeah. of your your thing right you have to yeah, kind right. of poke and then, and then people start getting a little bit confrontational yeah. or the difficult but at least it's because you're doing it because you want to make this work you know you're working right. on a project together it is not because you want to put that person down or you're threatened because you think that person's gonna um take away from your uh, glory you know you can't, it does it, it never it's never like that because if that 
even if that um, the side man, you know, in, in this movie, you know, if the side man doesn't be a, he's, he or she or it, it is not a good side man, that leading role is not going to work. Yeah, everybody plays Everything their part. Everything has to, you know, do well. And that's, that's what's good about the collaboration. And um, so speaking of collaboration, <laughs> we, <laughs> talked about do, we talked about doing this interview. And uh, you mentioned about maybe doing one of your poems, and I play a little mm -hmm. bit of a, ba a bass. And uh, that I, we did uh, not us together, but I did a lot of that actually when I lived in Japan, just collaboration and 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 free free form stuff. And it's interesting. So, would you like to do that? Sure. Okay. Let me grab my bass. It might be a little a little awkward because this is my first time doing this on the podcast. nation since 311, covered in the fear of unseen radiation. Don't you expect any revolution. All you will find is fear and contamination. It rhymes with Hiroshima. Instead of a holler, hear just a whimper. They say it is safe. The kids like Chernobyl are coming down sick with thyroid cancer. It's no hallucination, the refugee's life. No compensation, no resolution. Just nuclear explosions, get your dosimeter, seize him in the water, lost imagination. Fukushima, Fukushima, Fukushima. Here in Fukushima, it rhymes with Hiroshima. The radiated brothers, faces are hidden Goggles and masks, like an astronaut. From head to toe, invisible workers. Tsunami demolition, God's decreation, genetic devastation, our next generation. Here, in Fukushima, it rhymes with Hiroshima. No go zones forever. The world must remember Fukushima. 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 Powerful. That's really uh, wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, you know that you're willing to put yourself out there. I know you. Um, I wouldn't say politically active, but you you care, and I think that that really shows in your work. Um, 
what's your feeling about that as far as the artist's responsibility to sort of to the world and to humanity? I don't think we can really, um, as one person, um, fix anything. Um, you know, we're just individual artists, hmm. but um, we only, uh, you know, wake up and eat breakfast and you know, go to work and live. Yeah. Um, but, and I don't think we should have uh, requirements or grandiose uh, visions about what we can do and what we can't do. Mm -hmm. But every moment you're being asked, um, what, you, what are you gonna do, you know? And these horrible things have happened because somebody along the way either turned away or didn't do the right thing. You know, right. if everybody, like we're saying, if everybody <laughs> did, did their little bit, you know, of course we're gonna make mistakes, but there are ways to correct that, you know, and um, we, we, there, there is potential. And why is the, um, the world, you know, with like also like uh, uh, global warming, you know, the issue of climate change, sustainability, all these, and, and racism, you know, gender right. equality, um, uh, all these questions, um, it looks like it's not getting much better, right? I mean, some people mm. think that we're marching straight toward doom uh, as far as like the global warming issue. Right. Uh, but there's so many things that we could be doing. And um, of course we can't, you know, single-handedly solve anything, but, um, and, you know, the doctors have to do their bit, the engineers have to do their bit. Um, Politicians have to do their bit, uh, um, but I am not any of those things. I am just a writer, right. so that's all I can do. And I'm just being honest, you know. And so you're a bass player, so you 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 got to do, you know, you have to practice. And there's yeah. you know, things that every instrument has its dues, as they say, you know. And then you know you you know the violin, you know, they only have to carry a little instrument, you know. You got to carry a big <laughs> instrument. Yeah. Um, uh, poets have their um, their dues too. Yeah, and you have to find you have to find your voice no matter what you're doing, right? Yeah, and and let's hope that we're trying to do something that shifts the balance a little bit more toward the good and resolution and a better world than the other way around. Yeah, I mean, who knows? But I mean, we can only do our best. But I, I think I, I don't think we should be thinking. Um, we, we can solve everything. Uh, I think that's a big mistake our, our uh, predecessors have made that, that we thought we had everything under control. We don't. Everything is, is um, we may be going through to, to doom and we gotta like kind of get a grip on ourselves and, and, and see some of these assumptions that we made about modernization or civilization or um, getting ahead, hmm. you know, might not be, you know, where it's at. And, right. Yeah, and also, why, how come like so many people are are choosing not to have families? Um, many women that were my role models told me never to talk about family because uh, that would be a way that would put us, you know, put women who wanted to have careers back. Right. You know, why are we being told to make a choice? You know, mm. we should have it all. We should have safe food, safe water. We should have the right to, you know, to love the person we want, you know, you know, be it, you know, the same, same gender or another gender or right. anybody or, and we should have the right to have families. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's normal. I mean, birds and the bees and the, the elephants and the dolphins are all doing it. Yeah. How can we can't do it? And how can we can't do it in a normal way? Why do we have to keep hurting other people or, see that, um, you know, somebody has to suffer so that the other person can have happiness. You know, it's, we should all be happy together. And that's why I think, you know, making music together or collaborating together or trying to reach that other artist halfway when you make a film with the filmmaker mm -hmm. or when you work with actors. I don't know if you work 
you know, you 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 work with actors too, right? Because of your uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's another you know thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. So and then I mean, I would not, I would not want to be an actor, would you? I mean, like you know, they have to play all these things that aren't themselves. They got to get fat, skinny, you know. Yeah, I couldn't remember <laughs> all the words. <laughs> yeah, all that too. So you start to learn that everybody has their own um, own, you know, by by seeing that, you know, seeing what the realities are like for an actor or for a violin player, as opposed to a bass player or for a Japanese or then an American or a Nigerian. Those, I think those are all good. You know, those are good and we should try to do it all the time if we can, um, as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the potential is just as great as the, the bad stuff um, because the world is more connected. Here we are on the other, you know, other sides of planets and talking like this. Right. And um, the technology is there. Um, and, and everybody is, is sort of the same, don't you think? Um, before, I think China and, um, you know, uh, Algeria would, were very different, you know, right. in, in, in the, but now with, with the modern, modern world, um, some people say that Japan is one of the most different places they've been, you yeah. know, yeah, like, uh, because um, they're, yeah, you know, if you go to Hong Kong, um, the Philippines, or parts of Africa, it doesn't feel that different, right? I mean, everybody is more or less in this kind of like um, they speak English or French or something. Yeah, and the, the music actually, the music culture has brought a lot of that too, right? You've had Western yeah, right. music coming into those countries, and even in Japan. So yeah, so I think you know the potential is there. You know, the, it's it's easier. It is theoretically easier for us to connect mm -hmm. and, and, and make for a more connected and equal and better world. Um, but I'm, but I don't know. I mean, that there's, you know, there's, there's both, both going on the, mm -hmm. the move toward the good and the move toward, um, catastrophe. So, yeah, it's, I think that's always, it's funny. I, I think about that sometimes, like how people felt, you know, a thousand years ago, 500 years ago, maybe they felt exactly the same. Maybe they thought the world was going to end and, and there was, you know, you, it's it's really funny how that is because it's sort of the human experience, how we think about the world, how we interact. Like you said, today's technology has really opened up doors for for bad stuff and for great stuff, uh, for collaboration, for sharing ideas. But there's a responsibility that comes along with that too, right? But um, let me. Uh, to ask you, how, how can people find you? I know the film, um, you had this short and you have the documentary. Are those online where people can, can look at them and watch them? Um, we may eventually put them online, but because they're still um, relatively new in, mm. in the made within the last couple of years, um, we still want to enter them in festivals because ah, if okay. you haven't shared uh, too much, then that um, erodes the value and um, and also, um, the directors are a little bit nervous about having it out there all the time. Um, right. Yeah. So, uh, because then, then, I mean, we're talking about technology, and then there's a lot of uh, evil in technology. Right. Yeah, the pirating <laughs> and all that. Sure. Yeah. So, so um, they're. I don't think they feel comfortable with just having it out until mm. they're 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 at the stage where it becomes like. You know, yeah, let's share it. Like, you know, yeah, like or maybe maybe it ends up on a, on a uh, television or some kind of other where it's just a widely available. How can people how can people find you online personally? I know you have a website. Can you tell us what the I website is? I have a is? website, um, um, yurikageyama dot com, but people don't. I maybe I should have I shouldn't have chosen that because I should have had yuri dot com or something, but <laughs> because nobody can say my last name, but it, that that's the site, but. Um, and we'll put links to that on the on the uh, podcast. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you're and you're on obviously you're on Facebook and you're on on those social pages too. Right. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people. You have a really great story. Um, we only touched the surface of it. We could actually talk for a very long time, even about the being a news reporter in, in Japan it has to be pretty fascinating, and uh, an interesting world. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining 
us and also uh, sharing your poetry with us. Um, it's fun to, to play bass with you virtually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it'll, it'll, it'll be better if we, if we do it in real life because it, it, it is, it is, it's hard to, it was hard to hear. Yeah, it's a, cha it's a challenge, but I think it's, you know, it, it's fun, the, the collaboration part of it. It's fun to try new things and, and we can- so uh, next time you're in Japan or, or I'm there in the same, same space, you have to promise we can do it in a real life setting. Cause like you can hear the person uh, like breathing and moving and, yeah. and I, it was really hard to hear uh, on, on the, the Zoom call. Yeah, so it's, it's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, really. So I'd rather do it in real life. Yeah, well, we'll do that. But, uh, you know, we, we talked about maybe you sending me some stuff and we can we can work on that. And that would be fun. I like doing different things. I like doing it's a, That's a fun challenge for me. And it, the interaction, like you said, being in person in the same room is uh, getting the interaction is always that's the ideal. <laughs> Unfortunately, in today's world, it's a bit of a challenge. But um, yeah, I hope we get over this, you know, that the vaccine will really work. And um, I, I really hope that and this has really taught us um, what is what is essential, you know, and the, I mean, the pandemic. Right. It has been a good uh, wake up call, I think, and for a lot of people to examine uh, what what is important in your life and what you can do without and what you can do with and um, and how how uh, we're wasting our life in, in some ways. Right. Don't yeah. you think people really. Started. It makes you, it really makes you realize each day yeah. is precious, I think, yeah. you know. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Yuri, and uh, people will be able to find all of your links on the podcast description um, okay. with the website and, and all that, all that stuff. And uh, I actually look forward to seeing the film. I haven't had a chance to see that, and maybe I can, I can find a way for you to send me a, a copy. I, sure, promise, yeah. I promise not to pirate it. <laughs> yeah. We will be doing it. It will be shown in other uh, online film festivals too soon. Okay. Yeah. yeah, let us know and then and we can add we can add those links onto the description okay. so people can find you. Okay. So awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. And uh I, I I look forward to talking to you soon and maybe we'll get some collaboration going on between us. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much.